morning. You know you had a date with me to go duck hunting at daybreak? What did you do, oversleep? Oh, no. I got before daybreak, Abbott, but something terrible happened. Something terrible happened? What was it? At 5.30 this morning, I tiptoed out to the kitchen to cook my breakfast. I put on the maid's apron, and I was bending over the stove when the milkman came in. The milkman grabbed me in his arms and kicked me three times. Abbott, you know what? What? I think we're engaged. I oh. <laughs> Will you please talk, then? You certainly missed a great hunting trip this morning. Oh, I was too tired anyway, Abbott. I went hunting last night in Griffith Park. Huh? <laughs> Why, you dummy, there's no hunting in Griffith Park. How long have you been in Hollywood? Now, look, brother. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think you know anything about hunting. Oh, no? What time I shot a bear in the foot and knocked all the teeth out? Now, wait a minute. How could you knock a bear's teeth out of the... if you shot him on the foot? He was biting his toenail. Oh, come on. <laughs> now, Stella, you should be a saint. How could you have the nerve to stand up here in front of this intelligent audience and tell such a horrible joke. Well, I happen to like that joke, Abbott. In fact, I like it so well, I think I'm going to tell it again. No, no, not that. Anything but that. Don't tell a joke. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Come here, buddy. If you don't like our program, what did you come in here for? I was listening to you on my car radio. I came in here to prove something. What are you trying to prove? First, I thought the radio was on the bump. Now I know the bump is on the radio. <laughs> a nice boy. I'd like to buy him a ticket on a sinking ship. <laughs> well, never mind him, Costello. Uh, why aren't you wearing your Spanish costume? Do you realize tonight you and I are invited to the Latin American Embassy? Oh, yes. Yes, yes the ambassador asked us to come over to help him uh, cement friendly relations. Cement friendly relations? Yep. Not me, Abbott. That's what got my Uncle Artie Stebbins 20 years in Alcatraz. Your Uncle Artie Stebbins is in Alcatraz for cementing friendly relations? Yeah. He threw his mother on a concrete mixer. Right. <laughs> ah, nonsense, Costello. You're going to the party. I've already run into you a costume. You're wearing dressed as a Spanish grandee. Dressed as a what? A uh, grandee. Grandee. Not me. I ain't going to go to no party dressed in a diaper. No, nah, yeah, Tommy. A grandee doesn't wear a diaper. Oh, no? How about my hat my grandee? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. You're thinking of candy. Oh, sure. I like candy. Percy candy with the nuts. I know. Awesome. <laughs> you're, going, you're going to be dressed as a Spanish grandee. You have a mustachio and a serape. Oh, no, I won't. I had that last night in the drugstore, and it made me sad. You had a mustachio and a serape in the drugstore? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Mustachio ice cream covered with chocolate serape. Nah. Oh, was that serape? Yeah, I can imagine. Look, when you talk, then. Look, you're going as a Spanish grandee from the Andes. You've heard of the Andes. Oh, sure. I hear them every Tuesday night. The Amos and the Andes. They come on right ahead of that big Spanish program. What Spanish program? River McGee and Tamale. Now, look. <laughs> you tell me I'm talking about the Andes. The Andes are found in Chile. All they ever found in my Chile was beans. Sometimes a little drizzle. Now, look. Stop talking like an imbecile, Costello. Go home and get dressed. You're going to that party. And I say I am not going. Not after the way they insulted you. They insulted you? Yes, they did. Now, get a load of this invitation. Right in the very first line, they insulted me by making fun of my. Where does it say anything about your state? Right there, it says it. See your Luke Costello. Dear Ted Belly Roll. Wait a minute. <laughs> Ted Belly Roll? That's very nice. That Ted Belly Roll? You're calling me a Ted Belly Roll, yes. Yeah. That's Ted Belly Roll. What's the matter with you? Can't you read? A cavalier is a gentleman who takes a girl out for an expensive dinner, buys her flowers and jewelry, takes her to the finest show in town, and then when he takes her home, he doesn't even ask her for a good night kiss. In South America, they call them cavalieros. South America, they call them cavalieros? Yes. Yeah. We got the same thing back in Paris, New Jersey. Yeah. But we don't call them cavalieros. What do you call them? Ha! Ha! Ah! For the last time, I'm telling you, that I'm not going to go to that Spanish party. I got a date with my girl, Lena Genser. And if you don't invite her to go with us, then I ain't going either. Uh, or but, either. but wait a minute. Now, Lena, Lena would be out of place at this party. Her table manners are too disgraceful. You ever notice the way she eats? Yes. I think it's cute the way she slides her lower lip onto the plate and banks the meatballs off the spaghetti. <laughs> Costello, forget about Lena and come along with me. It's going to be a wonderful party. I am not going. But you're going to have a wonderful Spanish music. I am not going. But they're going to have rare old Spanish wine. I am not going. But they're going to have 50 luscious, brown-eyed, Latin American girls. You talked me into it. 
Right. Come on, let's get out of here quick before Lena gets here. If she finds out I'm going any place without her, there's going to be an awful fight. Costello, don't tell me that you fight with Lena. I'll see I do. Last night we fought tooth and nail. Tooth and nail? Yes, she nailed me in the pussy. Knocked out my tooth. Ah. <laughs> well, you'd better not let her get you in that Spanish costume. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. What am I going to do? Wait, what am I going to do? Wait, wait, don't get excited. Jump into that bed uh, and pull the covers over you. Come on, hurry up. I- I- I'll tell you you're sick. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, Abbott. Where is that lumpy-headed large bucket that I'm engaged to? Here I am, weeny, weeny. I'm lying here on my bed of pain. We'll have to break our date tonight, weeny. I'm a sick man. I've got a terrible case of piffle diffle. Piffle diffle? I never heard of anyone having that. I'm the only one guy in the world that's got it. There's something screwy going on here. You don't look sick to me. What are you doing in bed with your hat on? Oh, that's a... My, my, my hat? Hmm? What did you tell me, Abbott? What did you tell me I had the hat on? <laughs> oh, my hat! <laughs> oh, oh, my hat! Well, hurry up, big well, 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 you see, Lena, I always wear my hat in bed because if I happen to dream I met you on a street, I want to tip my hat to you. Are you trying to kid me? Come on, get them out of one of those covers. Ha-ha, I thought so. What are you doing in bed with that Mexican suit on? When you've got the piffle dipple, you've got to wear a Mexican suit. <laughs> the pain comes from south of the border. <laughs> Lena, Lena, please. You'd better get out of here before Costello gets another attack. Yes, and I terrible. feel one coming on. Yeah, there it is. Take it easy. All right. All right. All right. All right. Take it easy. Go, oh, please. Go. Oh. I told you. Hey, wait a minute. Costello, I'm beginning to smell a rat. That's no way to talk about Mr. Rabbit. <laughs> Both of you guys are dressed in Spanish costumes. Look, Costello, I don't know what you're up to, but I'm taking your car. Oh, Lena, don't do that, because I mean... Shut I'm... up! If you so much as poke your... <laughs> if you so much as poke your nose out of this house tonight, I'm going to come back here and clip your toenails all the way up to your knees. And then I'm going to pull your ears around the back of your head and fasten them onto your collar but That's going to hurt! <laughs> and finally, I will tie a sailor's knot in the end of your nose and hang you for the chandelier. And if that doesn't work, I'll torture you. Now, how are we going to get to the party, Costello? Lena's taking your car. Come on, Abbott. We'll go next door and see my friend Scotty Brown. See if he can help us. Scotty's home, all right. I see a dim light in there. Yeah, that's his reading lamp. He's got a bottle full of fireflies. <laughs> Ring the <a> bell, Costello. <laughs> Take your finger off the board and you're using up the electricity. <laughs> oh, what's you, laddie? Uh, I'd invite you in, but I'm afraid you'll frighten the mice I've got in the dining room. Uh, I hate to lose those mice. They save me a lot of money. Daddy, how can the mice save you money? Well, you see, laddie, my wife is scared to death of them, and she hasn't been downstairs for her meals in three weeks. <laughs> Uh, look, Scotty, we've got to get uh, get out to the Latin American Embassy for a big party, and Costello's car is gone. Uh, could you drive us there, please? Oh, I'm very sorry, laddies, oh. but I only drive the car on Saturday night. Why only on Saturday night? Oh, well, there's no sense in heating up the water in the radiator unless you can use it in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, Costello. We've got to get going. We'll be late. Hey, what time is it for your watch, Scotty? I beg your pardon. How do you like that? He's so tight he wouldn't even give us a time. <laughs> Look, never mind him, Costello. Hey, hey, here comes the car cruising down the street. We'll, we'll plumb a ride. Come on. Yeah, hey, it looks like a cute babe driver. Hey, she's going to stop, Abbott. Hey, Cook, how about giving me a lift? I'll lift you right off the ground with an uppercut to a glove of hand. It's Lena! Hey, I bet it's Lena! Where do you think you're going? To the hospital. My pistol, pistol just hit me again. Just what? Hit me again. Okay, you asked for it. Get me out of here, Oh, uh, confidentially, Connie, you're swell. Say, tell me, who is your singing? Huh? Oh, I've had a number, Chan, and one of the best was named Experience. Ah, wise words, fair lady. Old man Egypt, the fable king, said the same thing in ancient Greece way back some 3,000 years ago. 
Uh, tuning in on Aesop, we hear uh, experience is the best. And how that was proved when camels were hard to get. You know, during the war, it was the service first with camels. And even though production was breaking all records, the civilian demand just couldn't be met in full. Well, smokers tried more different brands than they'd ordinarily experienced in a lifetime. Seems kind of like they found that nothing takes the place of the rich, full flavor and cool mildness of the costlier tobaccos found in that cigarette called... Camels. For today, more people want camels than ever before in the history of this famous brand. Costello has outwitted Lena Genster again. She dropped him off at the hospital, but he sneaked out of the back way with Bud Abbott. And we find the two of them arriving at the party at the Latin American Embassy. The hostess is greeting the guests at the door. Oh, good evening, gentlemen. Come right here. Thank you, senora. I am Don Pasquale Fernandez. Ah. I am Don Jose Miguelito. Ah. I am Senor Bud Abbott. Ah. <laughs> and I am Senor Lucas Costello. Ah! Yeah, but who is this old Spanish onion? <laughs> How dare you make the insult? I am Senora Carmelita Lolita Chiquita Mosquita. And I'll have you know that we Mosquitos are a big family in South America. You're even a bigger family in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, Mr. Gentlemen, we are wasting time here in the hall. You must meet some of the Senoritas. Ah, here comes my niece. <laughs> She is making her day through. Tonight she's coming out. She's halfway out already. <laughs> hey, Senora, I would like to, I would like to present my lovely niece to you. Ah, good evening, my handsome Americano. <laughs> <laughs> I am Senorita Rosita Margarita Mosquita. Now here's a mosquito I'd like to buzz around with. <laughs> Thank you, senor. I like you, too. <laughs> I've seen you many times in the moving pictures. Oh, you are made so funny. Do you really know who I am? Who could ever forget little Porky Pig? That's all, folks. Oh, come, senor. Let us go in and dance. The orchestra is about to play a rumba. No, thanks, Rosita. The floor is too crowded. But what has the crowded floor to do with it? There's no fun doing a rumba when you can only take your head. <laughs> Let you and me take a walk on the veranda, Rosita. Hey, that's a good idea, Costello. I'll go with you. On your way, Abbott. Please, the crowd. I want to talk to Rosita alone. Well, all right. Talk to her. Abbott, I mean all alone. <laughs> Just the two of us. Get out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me get this right. You mean you want me to go? Oh, this kid is really tough. <laughs> Heels, 
Senor, you have kissed my sweet hand and insult my good name. I am down San Francisco, San Jose, San Luis Obispo, San Diego, San Bernardino. When you come to Glendale, I'll come off. Aha, another insult. For that pig, I am going to kill you. Oh, yeah? 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 You know, I could use a joke right here. <laughs> Silence, fine, fine. When we started this argument, I was just a pig. <laughs> I challenge you to the duel. I will meet you on the field of honor at 5 o'clock in the morning to avenge the stolen kiss. I didn't steal a kiss. And what is that red stuff on your lips? That is tomato juice. Tomato juice? Yes, from a little South American tomato. <laughs> that is enough. I will do you at 5. I will give you the choice of swords or pistols. You skunk. If I was a skunk, I wouldn't need swords or pistols. <laughs> Here's a dueling field, Costello. You certainly got yourself into a mess this time. Don San Francisco is a great pistol shot. Had it. I can't go through with this field. Yeah. Look at me. I'm all nervous and shaky. Uh, I can't help it. I walked the floor all last night. I know. And I can't get a wink of sleep because I don't want well, to die. Well, that's silly, Costello. I don't want nobody to tell me. Why don't you do like I do? When I can't uh, get to sleep, I just raise my feet in the air and let the blood rush to my head. I tried that. It's no good. No sleep? No blood. Oh, <laughs> oh there you are, gentlemen. We've been waiting for you. I'm the referee of this dueling match. Let me introduce myself. I am Senior Melonhead. I've seen your Melonhead around here before. <laughs> get over to our shiny dome. Melonhead, did I see you sitting in your front window last night? I resent that remark, Costello. I was upset at 8 o'clock last night with my head resting on my pillow. You sleep with that bald head on a pillow? Certainly. How do you keep it from sliding off? <laughs> Costello, what's the matter with you? Melon Head is the referee of the duel. He's here to help you. That's right, Costello. I came here to give you first choice of the dueling pistols. I don't need any pistols. I brought my own gun. See? This is the rifle my great-grandfather used in the Revolutionary War. It uses flint and powder and shoots iron balls. Ah, uh, you dummy, that old blunder bust won't work. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. All I do is just strike the flint on the powder. The powder ignites and the iron ball blows out the end of the barrel. Now, what's this? See? in just a moment. 
And now, this week's salute in the new series of salutes to the men who won the victory. Tonight, we salute the gallant crew of the aircraft carrier Enterprise, which has traveled more than 275,000 war miles and raced 18 out of 22 possible Pacific Theater stars. In your honor, men of the Enterprise, the makers of camels are sending to your fellow servicemen overseas 500,000 camel cigarettes. <laughs> 